Are you ready? Hell yeah. Are you ready? Hell yeah. Are you ready? Yeah, I am. Troublemakers, hello. We are Vintage Trouble. What? We are at Marvell's Legendary Blues Club in Santa Monica, California, where we played our first notes in front of people. We want to thank everyone that came out to our live stream last time, two weeks ago. It was an experience for us that ignited us beyond any belief that we could have imagined. It carried us through 13 days after that. And now we need some more fuel. So it is my prayer and our hope that you came with the juice and you're ready to squeeze it. The bomb shelter sessions we recorded in 2010, or somewhere circa 2010, and we released it, and it brought us all around the world. It's our honor to be able to play side A and side B of this record for you for the first time ever. And um, we're starting with side B today. I mean, we're only doing side B today. I'm gonna w let a couple more people come in to Harvell's virtually. It would usually be this cool guy with dreads up front or some tall uh, other yeah. African-American guy that yeah. was so funny. That dude was cracking up. There'd be somebody that would be inviting you in. Know that you'd walk into a club. So people that are virtually coming in, let me give you this picture. You'd probably park in the parking lot because there wouldn't be any spaces left for you in the back by the time the show started. And then um, you would leave your car. You'd probably be fixing your tie or putting your belt on, trying to get all dressed up. And you'd be coming into the front door of Harvell's. Now, Harvell's is this legendary spot. On the walls are pictures of the greats. And <laughs> um, it's filled with a staff of people that we consider to be family. It's run by this guy named Seven Clark, who is... Is, is our son and our father and our friend and our friend's friend yep. and everything you can imagine. Um, the, you know, we used to dance down bars, bars on fire here. Um, it was so sweaty. It's weird to be here during the day with all these fans to accommodate the health needs today because we're used to this place being a really sticky, wet place. I remember at certain nights we even played here at Harvell's when the ceiling was dripping. So like you'd feel something running down your face and you thought it was your own sweat, but it was the sweat of the roof of the place. Because the, the roof, the roof, the roof was on fire. How many numbers we got? Who's in this room? How many we got in the room right now? We got seven, we got five people. 439, all right. We're gonna wait 10 more minutes. No, we're not, we're not gonna wait 10 more minutes. Um, but hey, everyone that's here right now, I can think about stories from the road, and the most important story to me that rings loudly every time we play this came to us from one of our, one of the queens of the Troublemakers named Fiona. And her father had just passed, and um, it was the first time we got to go out on the road and see how our music was affecting people that weren't our friends. But this woman in the front row she heard the intro of this song happen, this woman, Fiona, and she fell to her knees from emotion. And that's all you can hope to do as a musician is to make music that will soothe people, that will make people angry, that will make people joyous, that will make people mad, um, that will help people mourn for people they lost. With this particular song, another thing that we always hear whenever we're on merchandise lines is that this song maybe helped save some people's lives. So if we do nothing else in our career that we call music, to say that one person's life has been saved by a song is literally enough. And everything else is kind of cherries on the top of the jubilee. This song is called Nobody Told Me.
Thank you. I guess the only way that we can know 30 seconds from this moment that you had a good time then was <laughs> by some hearts that'll happen in 26 seconds. <laughs> so <laughs> how's everybody doing out there? Troublemakers, who's out there? Who's saying some stuff? Yeah. Get, Pam is out there. Amanda. Lant. Okay, check it out. What does anyone say anything? Anybody ask any questions yet? Everyone's saying yeah, yeah. So everyone's giving me some yeah, yes. Well, wherever you are, say yeah. 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 Okay, so at any given point during this um, live stream, you can ask questions and they will be fed to us. And then we will feed answers back, hopefully. And that might satisfy your question. Um, what we want to talk about for a second is is um, this is Rick Barrio Dill over here on bass. Yeah, baby. You guys know him. Hey, this is Richard Danielson Hi. back here on drums. You know him. And Nale Colt on guitar. You also know him. My name is Ty. You don't know me. Get yeah. to know me. Y'all know me. I would like to say the bomb shelter, it was this studio in a part of LA that happens to be really popular right now, like restaurants, all kinds of stuff that was not there before um, we recorded there. So it was like this really remote area of town. It felt really special to be there. Peter McCabe was producing this record with and for us. And we did this record just because we needed to have something to sell during and after shows here at Harvell's. And so we thought, let's just make some demos real quick. So we went in there after three weeks of being together. We recorded this album in three days. And it, it has been the joy of our lives together. And it kind of led us to a road that was hopeful. See what I did there? See what you did. See what That's you did. like for the inside troublemakers, one hopeful road. But anyway, Bomb Shelter Sessions is this thing uh, that took us on television. It, 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 it was the record that got us our first tour bus. It was the record that introduced us to most of you people on this live feed today. Um, I know a lot of you said that you were bringing friends, that you were inviting friends to the party, so that's cool. Welcome to the party. Uh, let's hope that the, that the links are, are alive this time. If you guys are having any trouble on the uh, PayPal link, let us know. If you're having any trouble on the Venmo link, let us know. If you have any questions, send them to us. I know everyone seems to get their nerve up. It's like having your drinks before you can go up to someone and start flirting with them. Everyone seems to wait a while to get the nerve up to ask the questions, and then there are too many questions to, to answer. What are the plans for the new album? We've been recording. We started recording this new album before we went into quarantine. And so we have so much music that we're so excited about bringing to you. And people will ask kind of what the style of this music is. We wanted to go back to feeling um, a little more vintage. And so we were inspired by the 50s and 60s again, but also the 70s this time. And that's been exciting. And the songs are, are definitely big, big movers. And there are a lot of groovers, too. There are a couple songs I listen to all the time. I mean, some people that were on this Facebook thing the other day saw me doing this thing with some squats and some kicks and stuff. Know that that was inspired by a song we have called, um, I'll just say it. It's called Who I Am. And it is fucking a rager. <laughs> it's fucking a rager. It's going to put all the troublemakers in a headlock and make y'all feel mad that you even asked about when is the new record come out. <laughs> so there's a, lot of, there's a lot of new music happening. Um, I also, is there another question? Oh man, I'll take that. I'll take that. I'll take that. I'll take that. I, I, I got a lot of pain. Yeah. Any other questions right now? What's funny is, like, for me on the for me on the mask thing, you gotta talk to your mic. Uh, for me on the mask thing, I, it's like in, indoors. I'm not doing it for me. I'm really doing. I have a lot of sort of. I have a family, elderly, and, and people that are um, immuno-challenged and stuff, and I want to be around them, and I definitely don't want to get them 
anything. So I, I just get all inside. I get all sort of over. I overcompensate. So that's why you're sitting over here with Mortal Kombat, Mr. Bane guy today. Sweet. See is that? See how that answer satisfied you like a like a soppy biscuit. <laughs> like a soppy soppy biscuit. Uh, you guys want to hear some more Vintage Troubles um, Side B of Bomb Shelter Sessions? Yeah. All right, cool. Let's get into it. Uh, this next song, even back here at Heart Village, I remember my, a good lead-in for this is who wants to hear a song about a whore? And when I say that, I say it with so much love for a woman named Jezebella.
Yeah, that's Jezebella. I was told there'd be whores here. <laughs> After the gig, there are going to be some prizes in the form of uh, sanitary liquids and masks. But it's, I mean, once upon a time, that might sound like a pretty sexy venture. Yeah, right? Right? You know, last, I remember, I remember I was at a party in the 90s where we needed sanitation, sanitary liquids, liquids. and masks. It was a whole different thing. <laughs> <laughs> it was sketchy and scandalous. And all the skuz, skeety. It was skeety. Skeety, skeety. Oh, I'm gonna get in trouble. <laughs> I just used the word skeety. <laughs> Sketchy, scandalous, and skeety. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry if I'm offending anyone's bookish sensibilities. If you're questioning why that's happening, because you've come into the wrong room. <laughs> um, so, let me see. There are only four songs on side B, by the way. And so, I want to remind you of this thing below me. We have people in this room that we have to support. We have ourselves we have to support. And um, we are not on the road right now, so it's been really a kind gesture of anyone that's sent anything to the PayPal and Venmo link. It is what has been allowing us over the last couple of weeks to have a little more ease in our minds about leaning into creating new music rather than stressing out about finances. There's some honesty for you. But hey, I'm an honest person and there you go. Thank you so much for your donations. Uh, I know that everyone is having a, a tight walleted moment and so anyone that wants to give anything we really appreciate it. if you don't have anything to give then just be here and enjoy the show and um, just accept the giving from us to you um any anyone have anything else you guys want to talk about the mom shelter sessions at all anything anybody want to say richard yeah why not i'll say some stuff what's up so Ten years ago is when this all happened, so it's, it's a special year for us. It's too bad we're not out on the road to celebrate it with y'all, but we're here with y'all, and uh, we've been on the road every year for ten years, so, um, you know, as musicians, we love to do that, but part of that's y'all out there, so thank you for ten years of glory, you know, friendship, and it's growing, and uh, it's growing within which as well, so it's been beautiful to watch. You know, in thinking about these songs, there's some other, and, and I don't want to go off into a whole other thing, but just to mention this, and maybe some people, if you're real diehards, can go search this, but um, during this time, you know, there were some other songs that kind of trickled over, and they've kind of made it into the bomb shelter sort of, uh, you know, era. And uh, you can find them out there, and they've, they've just made their way onto other releases, like uh, Japan, for example, has some deluxe bonus editions of the bomb shelter sessions, and they've got some songs that nobody's listening to because nobody's finding them. Uh, one of my favorites is called Come On By. I really love that song. It's a nice ballad, 6-8. Uh, there's a really other sweet song. And Ty, I love your lyrics so good on this. It's called Honeydew. That's also on a bonus Bomb Shelter Session CD out there. Uh, around this time, we had Pelvis Pusher. That actually made it on a uh, deluxe edition. Uh, there's a live... There's another version of Strike Your Light. There's World's Gonna Have to Take a Turn Around. Uh, there's a live version of uh, Nancy Lee. There's a live version of Love With Me. So these are all Bomb Shelter era songs that you can find and search, and I bid you to go out and do it. And uh, in closing, I just want to say, man, what a crazy-ass time we're in. I've loved to see L.A. slow down. Uh, I know that there's been some darkness out there as well. Uh, but I hope that uh, everybody out and listening is, is finding something or searching something or maybe challenging themselves <coughs> to find some light in all this. And uh, it seems like they are. I know families are talking more. They're spending more time together. People are reading more books. Uh, so love, love is the answer. Love to you all. Yeah, that was Richard Danielson on love. Bomb shelter sessions and more. <laughs> uh, I 
I think I'm trying to think of something that people might not know about that session that we were in. Oh, we would. Here's the deal. We would play. We would play shows here during that three days. At least one of the nights, we would leave a show here and then go record that album. So some of the songs on the album we had done three sets here at Harvell's and then went to the bomb shelter sessions to record the demos that we were doing that ended up being the bomb shelter sessions. I know Richard was talking about um, Royal's gonna have to take a turnaround. I know that happened on the last night of recording of bomb shelter sessions and it was just so late. We had friends like Jason Page and Tawny was there who ended up singing with us by the way on the road. Um, I know that our friend Charlie Brumley that you said, oh, while we're talking about the bomb shelter sessions, we gotta talk about Charlie Brumley. Yeah. Who every day stood kind of right behind where Nolly is, where Nolly's, uh, you know, white guitar is right now. That's where Charlie would sit and he'd play harmonica and sing background vocals with us. And he was, he was around with us a lot during the beginning of these days. So here's a, a, a send out to Charlie Brumley. Charlie. Um, all right, you guys ready to do, to do this? We're gonna move on. I hope everyone at home is having a good time. Can you send out some hearts right now so that I see them in 30 seconds? All right, so we don't gotta tell you about this one. Ready? Brockum, brockum. Brockum, brockum.
you. Like you don't know me, and I don't know you. Like you don't know me, like Cold Train. That guy with the big, huge biceps over there clapping. Yeah, yeah. so <laughs> note to self I was dared by my friend to try and not dance a lot during Total Strangers today. And I said I was going to try and make it like internal. I lost that bet. <laughs> Can't do it. <laughs> Can't do it. Um, it feels good to be out of breath. Nice to have like little dripping going on. <laughs> yeah, see, it's not good to have me in show mode because show mode is for bigger spaces than computer screens. So this might be a little combustial. Yeah, That's not a word. <laughs> it is now. But I'm jamming on it. Uh, or do we have any more questions from people? When's it coming out? When are we getting outside? I don't know. That's, that's <laughs> an answer that no when, one can answer. When can I leave right the now. house? Without, without, that's, without um, but it's being. <laughs> what do you say? <laughs> Richard, you have an anniversary? Is your wedding anniversary? No, but yes. I mean, yes. <laughs> Mm, that's that's, that's <laughs> Angela. Angela's calling to say no, you got a happy I, I anniversary. You forgot not, this morning. I, I didn't know it was he, he left the house and forgot to say happy anniversary. <laughs> oh, shit. And no, Angela's no. like, Angela's Dang. like, yeah, tell okay. Richard, don't come home. <laughs> Tw Twenty-one years with my lady. I'll take. Oh. I didn't know it was out there. So. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the day's yes, young. Someone, someone, named, someone named Angela is saying happy anniversary. <laughs> no, um. 21 years, yeah. So that's 21 years is a long time. That's an adult. So you've just become, your relationship can drink now. <laughs> right. And good thing we're at a bar where there's lots of alcohol and not a lot of mouths. Um, so what is some, someone wants to know about my tattoos. Well, I'll talk about this string right here only because it was inspired by this place called Lake Shrine in um, Pacific Palisades, kind of toward the beach. It's also known as a self-realization center. It was started by a guy named Paramahansa Yogananda, who was one of the main yogis in our lives. And, well, not in my life, kind of before me, but he also has the same birthday as me. And as you look at it, it's the seven major spiritual beliefs the reason why um, I have that is because at this place I was talking about, Lake Shrine, around the periphery of this beautiful pond or lake, whatever they want to call it, there are proverbs from every different religion or spiritual belief that are saying the same exact thing with different language, but they're all meaning the same thing. As to say, we're all trying to get to the same place and we're letting the differences be what we're um, um, amplifying instead of our similarities. So I got this tattoo before we're in this day and I love the fact that so many people stop me now and they say, oh, I'm, I'm a Sikh or I'm Hindu or I'm Jewish or I'm, you know, nation, whatever it happens to be, they understand that, that there's a connection between us all and I'm glad to wear it like, you know, like it's a billboard. What annoys me about it is that I got it and then all of a sudden these coexist bumper stickers came out. <laughs> and then so now people are like, oh my God, you got the coexist tattoo. Does it look like coexist? No. <laughs> Fuck so that's just about that tattoo. <laughs> Kobe. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then there's a, there's a lot more of them, but I'll just talk about that for right now. Um, I do want to say, I don't know about you guys, but it's been an overwhelming amount of people that have been sending us messages in our private boxes about what happened two weeks ago, and therefore I hope they're going to be saying it again today. Honestly, you think it's a gift that we're giving you. It is, it's our gift. We have this muscle 
that we've not been exercising for the last four months. So to get up on this stage, it's a joy. And there could be no other place that we'd rather do it than here. And there could be no other people we'd have sharing it that'd be so special than, than our troublemakers. So thank you guys for being around for this. And thank you for letting us know what it meant to you. And thank you for sending videos of yourself dancing in your places at home. That's been really cool to see people dancing during this. That's, that's the universe calling, saying it's time to go to the next song. <laughs> Universe can leave the AKA, I forgot to put my phone on airplane mode, so <laughs> there's that. <laughs> um, Nolly, do you have anything to say about anything that happened during the bombshell sessions? Well, I mean, uh, I guess the cool thing is that, you know, we made, we made a, this whole 10 year anniversary thing, is that on this stage, this is what we wish that in all these songs, you know? This is where it kind of all happened, right here, right? I mean, we're all at this spot, and, and like Ty said earlier, we went straight to the studio, so it's really cool to be here, like doing it here for real, because it feels like the circle is kind of uh, closed, you know, and even our camera guy, you know, no one was saying we were here at the time, you know, and then Seven, thank you for letting, giving us the first Tuesday, Trouble Tuesday, baby. Yeah, people got mad at us for that. <laughs> yeah, no, it was scary, because, you know, Seven, the owner here, he, he said, like, well, I'll give you one Tuesday and we'll see how it goes. You know, so yeah. like, oh, shit. Fuck it Tuesday. <laughs> Fuck it Tuesday. Thanks. But, uh, <laughs> but it was really cool. And we, uh, we ended up spending so much time here. So I want to thank everyone and, and, you know, what this place means to us. And in a way, it was kind of cool. I mean, I'm not, you know, this whole crazy epidemic thing is mad. But now being that we had a little bit of downtime that we could do this, it's pretty cool. So, and especially for the 10 year anniversary of Bombshell Session. So with no further ado, we actually want to play the last song on the album. Yeah, well there's some more to do, actually. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was gonna say, <laughs> that was Nale. What's been really cool about, Rick has been saying it all the time, and then Nale said it now, and Richard also said it about it being the 10th anniversary. So maybe we should just make these live streams, we should give them a, a a second title, which is 10th Anniversary Tour. Like we should call, we yeah, should yeah. <laughs> the yeah, virtual yeah. 10th Anniversary Tour. Yeah. And so it's not gonna be a tour to different places, it's gonna be tour through different kinds of music. So maybe yeah. we can work that into whatever the heading is, to have it be about the 10th Anniversary, which we wish we could have been with you during. Um, yeah, let's finish out the Bomb Shelter Session, side B, and then we'll talk about what the future holds. <laughs> That sounded so heavy. <laughs> um, this song we're gonna do right now, it's the last song on the record, and to me, it's the song that hits me the most. I remember going through one of the hardest times in my life, and uh, this song just spit itself out as a necessity for me to be able to keep walking on the earth. Love weather Wind Just blew in again Whistling through the cracks in my door I should have known You'd show up When the cuts were out 
What time are we at? 148. 148. All right. So let's take a couple more questions. If someone has a, a something that answers questions, asks questions. Anything else from anybody? I'm sure we got hearts. That was Nale Cult on guitar. Okay. So there are no more questions. So I want to say. We'll be back in a couple of weeks. Um, I mean, we have an idea about what it's going to be, but we haven't really flushed it out. But know that it'll probably have to do with One Hopeful Road <laughs> <laughs> while we're moving. And, um, and, you know, there are all these kind of contests and things we have going on. So um, just because we're trying to amp this thing up, we're trying to make these productions and this stream be the best that it can possibly be. Um, so anyone, I don't know, if you happen to be one of these people that it can happen for you this way, if you can give a great donation and choose a song from One Hopeful Road, then you can probably get that song played for you next week. <laughs> um, um, there's, there's the gauntlet because we're not going to do One Hope for Road in two pieces. We're going to just do it one day. So we get about six, six songs we've been doing these live streams. So um, from today, why don't we just say the biggest donations from today get to choose the songs for the next show. I probably, we probably should have talked about that, but I get cockier <laughs> while we're up here, so I figured why not. Okay, so check this out. The biggest donations. No, <laughs> no. So check it out. So it's going to. It goes to such a great thing. Um, not just for us to keep making music and only think about music, but it also helps everyone that's in this room that you don't see. Um, and then what it also does is it. Um, it just keeps this broadcast getting better and better each time. And um, and there's so here's the thing I know we're gonna bite ourselves in the ass by making this request because someone's gonna give like twenty thousand dollars and ask for my baby don't it? Yeah. We've never even played it before, but it will happen. It'll I'm happen. telling you, it we, will happen. We've never played. A you know we're gonna be playing some shit we've never ever played. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can buy merch on our website. Um, who we had a great call with this guy Greg from whatever that place is called. What is OC stand for? Official community. community. Yeah. It's really great. So maybe now things will be available. <laughs> <laughs> they will be now. <laughs> they will be now. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. I'm a lovely asshole. But yeah. sometimes I'm asshole. So here's the thing. Um, VengeTrouble.com has all of our merch. Um, yeah, just go there and, and check out all kinds of things. We're going to offer all kinds of bundles. Any kind of suggestions? you troublemakers have about how we can make this time that we're separate feel more like we're together, just send us a little note about it. Um, uh, we lost uh, a great John Lewis. Fought for so many things. I suggest that you go to Wikipedia today if you don't know who this man is and find out what he did, not only for our country, not only for African Americans, um, just for humanity, for peace, for equality for just the goodness of, of man. And uh, he has this speech that, that Rick was kind enough to, to, to slice up only because we're not gonna be together. Um, it'd be too long to listen while we just sat here, but here's a piece of it. It uh, talks about one thing that Richard used to talk about a lot in interviews, which is you know, troublemakers don't have to just be a bad thing. Troublemakers are people that cause friction, and that can be also toward goodness. And John Lewis, rest his soul, is definitely someone that 
um, was a good troublemaker. So please listen to this. Um, after that, we're going to kick right into um, our new version of Not All Right By Me called Not All Right By Me, We Can't Wait. That's available on Spotify. And it, uh, it, it's, it's about a cause that's really important, especially in the United States. There are people that are being hurt continually um, in the United States by um, the effect of police brutality. And there are eight can't wait. It's a campaign, hashtag eight can't wait. You can look that up. But this particular moment, we're celebrating the power of the life of John Lewis. As young people, you must understand that there are forces that want to take us back to another period. But you must say that we're not going back. We made too much progress and we're going forward. There may be some setbacks, some delays, some disappointment, but you must never ever give up. The wind may blow, the thunder may roll, the lightning may flash, and the rain may beat on our old house, call it the house of Georgia or Alabama or New York. Call it the house of Europe, call it the house of Africa, call it the house of Asia or Central or South America. We all live in the same house. It was many, many years ago, I saw those signs that said white men, colored men, white women, colored women, white waiting, colored waiting. I would come home and ask my mother, my father, my grandparents, my great-grandparents, why? And they would say, that's the way it is. Don't get in the way, don't get in trouble. But one day in 1955, 15 years old, in the 10th grade, I heard about Rosa Parks. I heard the words of Martin Luther King Jr. on our radio, 1957. I met Rosa Parks at the age of 17. In 1958, at the age of 18, I met Martin Luther King Jr. And these two individuals inspired me to get in the way, to get in trouble. So I come here to say to you this morning, you must find a way to get in the way. You must find a way to get in trouble. Good trouble, good trouble, necessary trouble. Good trouble. Good trouble. Good trouble. Woo! 
All right, so we love you, troublemakers, and it's good to feel love from you. PayPal below me, Venmo below me. We'll see you in two weeks for um, selections from One Hopeful Road, chosen by today's top donors, donators, tippers, givers, heroes. Mm. <laughs> um, Nale, Richard, Rick, Ty, Harvells, we all thank you. And we will see you in two weeks for selections from One Hopeful Road. Thank you for being here last week and today to celebrate the 10th anniversary of the Bomb Shelter Sessions record. See you soon. Are we out?